Hi, my name is Ian. Welcome to my channel. And this is another impromptu review in the gap of things. Different part of my desk. Um, so you'll notice that there's no no piano blocking the view. But this is, um, I think I need the space on uh, on this. But this is generally um, <coughs> my, my normal working side of the desk. Um, but at the moment, all of that's cleared out of the way a little bit, just to show you uh, this particular game, um, which is Traveller Ascension. Now, this game, give you a bit of background on it, it came out through Kickstarter. I had a very painful birth, really, through Kickstarter. Uh, there were all sorts of things going on in the background that meant that it was delayed by by some time and I'll um, I'll put some bits and pieces up about the Kickstarter on the screen for you to have a look at as we as we go through this but anyway this is the Kickstarter version of Traveller Ascension um, and what can I say about it to start with uh, the premise of the game is uh, you are playing um, uh, a, an authority figure, probably a noble or some description of that, but you can configure the sort of uh, corporation or the, the authority that you represent with um, within the game. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, and this is at the at the end of the uh, of the long night. So right at the beginning of the third imperium. So the long night has gone through. Uh, and at some point, I, I want to do a campaign series where we look at uh, fictional worlds, especially ones that have been involved in gaming or fictional settings. Um, and the the Traveller's Imperium will be one of those. But to, to cut a long story short, <clears throat> um, the, the Long Night was basically you had a, a, an Imperium, Second Imperium, Rule of Man, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that collapsed. You uh, the, the space that uh, it, it once occupied then the worlds lost contact with each other uh, entered this period called the long night technological decline te um, the interstellar isolation everything else all these worlds stopped talking to each other interstellar travel became uh, very few far between and then eventually um, the a, a core pocket of, uh, of worlds that had continued to contact each other and keep in touch and keep trading with each other started to expand out into the um, into the wilds of the unknown reaches that were the remnant of the second imperium and therefore the third imperium was born um, and began to to grow so this game takes the premise of right at the beginning of the third imperium <clears throat> the the emperor uh, of this this nascent th uh, third imperium is sending people out or giving people um, imperial warrants in order to go and uh, recontact new worlds, take them over, exploit their resources, bring them into the empire, and therefore the empire grows. So that's the premise of the game. You play one of these organisations that is going out to recontact worlds that were um, that have been isolated for the better part of uh, well, nearly two thousand years, and and therefore build your carve your own little domain within the uh, within the uh, the growing third imperium so that's the premise of it so how does it do it well i'm going to crack this open bear in mind that uh, i think this game is available uh, but this is the kickstarter version so you know pretty plastic box and the number of bits and pieces and god knows what else in here is um may or may not be available in the in the game that's actually commercially available Right, so <coughs> let's uh, let's crack open the box and we'll start to show you what's, what you get. Uh, so, well, I'll lean up properly. Okay, so that's just to keep everything going. So, rule book. It's not a very big rule book, but there's quite a lot in the game. Um, but we'll uh, we'll I, I won't go into all the rules, but I will roughly give you a view of. Uh, of what's possible in the game. Um, this is for Starship Combat. When uh, ships start coming into conflict with each other, 
this is used. Uh, those that play Traveller may may sort of understand this kind of layout as uh, as range bands and so on. So you do move ships between each other, um, and uh, and the 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 actual Starship combat combat feels Traveller uh, Traveller Travellerly Traveller feels a bit like Traveller. That's there we go. I'm trying to invent new words. Shakespeare did it. Why can't I? Um, these things are play mats. Two of those. There is an expansion. This is the two-player version of the game. There was there is an expansion for more than um, to extend it up to more than two players. Uh, I didn't get that expansion uh, mainly because you know confidence in the way the Kickstarter went and everything else. Um, and in any case, I think the two-player game gives you more than enough to uh, uh, to to play with. But yeah, th these are. These are play mats, and I'll show you how they work um, briefly. Uh, then we've got a scenario book. This is just different layouts of things. I'll show you how the layouts work. Um, just various scenarios that can you play out, uh, and then the meat of the thing. Oh, this is like you know, pretty kind of nonsense that you get in in Kickstarter stuff. But there you go, um, my own Imperial Warrant. How wonderful. OK, so as you can see by this, there is an absolute ton of components in this. Um, so huh. well, uh, let me let me just go through. So uh, let's let's go through. That's a that's a turn tracker. That's easy enough. Um, bunch of cards. The, the it is a card based game. Um, there is some dicing to it, but not not that much at all. Uh, things like you know initiative, play order, what things happen, and everything else is is largely done by cards. So there's quite a few cards. Um, there's even more cards into there, by the way, but I won't get them all out. I'll just show you what cards are for. Um, Dice, like I said, there's there's not much in the way of dice. It's mainly like to resolve conflicts and stuff like that. But there are there are dice with it. Um, that is just a that thing there is just a counter in order to um, follow through turn counters and everything else, and then a whole bunch of dice. Um, now this is this is the sort of crux of building your um, your particular entity, right? So your your particular organisation. So there's a bunch of those little cards, and there are some uh, further ones. Uh, these ones. So th those sections together go to build your faction. All right. Um, so let me show you a little about that uh, for the second, uh, and then I can kind of go uh, stay. And then we can go into a little bit more about the rules and constructing the actual um, playing board as you like, right? So, and like I said, this is why I felt that I needed a bit more room than uh, I normally use for these types of thing. Oh, I probably needed even more room. Well, that's good. Never mind. Ah, uh, there for the second. <clears throat> this is uh, <laughs> when people turn around and say, "Oh, haven't you got um, haven't you got this game or that game or this game?" and uh, and I say, "Well, no, because um, if a if a new game comes out, it has to be very exceptional for me to uh, for me to go and and get it because uh, space is very 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 much a premium in my poor little office." Right, so. Um, uh, from the rules, as you can see, pretty quick in the rules, and we have. I won't bother about so that. That, 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 that. Right, here we go. So this is <coughs> the the player boards. So as you can see, there's all of these these things that go together to go and build the various bits and pieces that you've got um, to create your particular faction. Uh, and there's a number of them, and they've both got different sides. Uh, and they all just fit together like a jigsaw. So what you want is is 
one in each column. So there's, no, I'll just go and assemble something so that we've got something to look at. So that's, this describes your particular faction, right? And each one of these particular things, um, that they're, they're, they're not necessarily the same. So let's have a look, let's compare these two, movement two, right? So here we've got, we've got enter quadrant, enter quadrant, right? So there we go. We've also got uh, redeploy forces and redeploy forces, fine. Then we've got book passage, but this one's got blockade and then book passage and then withdraw from quadrant. This doesn't help withdraw from quadrant. So these, these are actions um, and um, oh, abilities, whatever, that describe your faction. So this faction has not got much, not got as much as this faction in the way of movement. Um, again, it's not got much in the way of um, of the economics as this one and so on. But then again, when you get to the science thing, you know, move scouts, spoiler scouts, map star system, planet full, improve, improve technology, ship design. But they, these are all. Um, are they all the same? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the, the the middle ones are all the same, and then the and they're different. Okay, so you have the option to configure your own uh, your own faction in that way. Now, there are connectors. There are these little connectors that fit in here to go and connect these bits to these bits. Okay. So there's another part there. See that little hole there? There are connectors that, that fit in there. I think I would have preferred it if they'd actually made it so they jigsawed together like everything else, but hey ho. Um, that one belongs there. And then let's just take another, let's find, there we go. And that one belongs. And hey presto, that is the definition of your, um, of your faction. <laughs> and it's just like a bunch of configuration and things like that. Now, a, a lot of these come from different uh, different decks and expansion decks and everything else. Some of these are unique to the Kickstarter. As part of the Kickstarter, you got to you got to uh, design your own faction. Um, so some of these bits and pieces fit together to create a faction that I um, I described, generated, what have you, for um, first part of the Kickstarter. Um, and so, yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, so let me now show you how a, how the map that you play on is put together. And it, again, it's a bit sort of jigsawy. Back to the box. <clears throat> Part of the fun with this game is remembering where everything fits. <laughs> okay, so to build the board, you have these things, these world descriptor things. Uh, you have these things which represent jump points, and you have oh, more jump points and an absolute ton of connectors um if you not in there no where are the little ones can't remember where i actually put the little the little tiny connectors and put them in the same bag did i by little tiny connectors i mean the ones that connect the uh, the faction bits and pieces to get out oh, they're, they're probably in there somewhere uh, when, I, when I say there is a lot of bits and pieces to this I'm not joking um, I'm not joking at all right they're in there somewhere <clears throat> okay so uh, off you go again box and I'll explain a bit about them. well so <clears throat> Each scenario 
as you can see, here you go, here's one. Um, gives you a little plan of what's going on there. So, um, Uh, in this particular one, um, so in this one, both players take, start in the same system, A-class Imperial World, with three so uh, society panels. I'm um, drawn at random. I'll show you what they are in a sec, but let's deal with this in the foot in first. Uh, and three resource panels. And before the game begins, map and planet fall each remaining system in the subsector. Uh, planet fall is um, it is it, it, it during part of the game. You you can go into a system, you survey it, and then you end up you engage in planet fall, which is sending agents down onto the planet itself to go and refine your surveys and actually make contact with people and that kind of thing. Um, uh, map and planet fall each remaining system. So what this is saying as part of this particular scenario is instead of the planet fall happening. Um, as you go in the default sort of thing where you don't know anything about any of the, the systems and you're just going from one system or other and, and describing it as go. Um, the, the planets in this particular subsector, which is the subsector layout, are uh, already described before the game particularly starts as part of the game start, setup. Um, fill in the empty systems with one asteroid field panel and the rest empty space panels. Okay. Once all systems are mapped, along with planet four, players then place four outposts. Um, I suppose you can sort of think of these as things like, um, you know, Monopoly, where you build you, you build houses and then you build hotels and stuff like that. Your players, once they've uh, they've established a presence in a system, can start building stuff and they can uplift the system and so on. Uh, in any system desired, they may also place four assets or ships anywhere in the subsector. So assets are things like agents and diplomats and so on, and ships are just yes, ships that carry them around. And the victory conditions of this, it's like whichever player has the most treaties formed, treaties between the um, populations and your organisation, uh, by the end of turn eight, so it's got a limit of turns, not 10 terms is that, is the winner. If there's a tie, then the player with the highest victory point total wins. There we go. Um, and then these add-ons are just the, um, the the additional decks and and uh, component blocks that you can, you can pick up. Uh, if they're still available. I will check to see if they're all still available. But uh, I do have some of these, but I can't remember which ones I've got where. Um, in the bottom of the box of the the original decks so I've got a reference back to them if I if we need to but basically the add-on packs they, they give you more cards and more actions and things right so <clears throat> let's see how all of that fits together so for the world then it, you <clears throat> there, there you go, let go. Uh, you have a world um, you grab a bunch of these connectors. Then these go out to jump point. Going to do this sort of quickly. Uh, don't worry about what that's what's that saying there. We'll we'll come to that, and then you know that goes to another world. Oh, the empty space one. Let's put an empty space one there just to mix things up a bit. <clears throat> another jump point there. I think you can see. Um, why well, I needed a bit more space than my uh, normal, normal uh, keyboard setup would allow. Um, just to show you this game, I'm not going to put a whole map together, but what have I done wrong? I've done something wrong. Oh. <sighs> so I wasn't working because I was being an empty. 
There we go. I bet you all um, you all noticed that, didn't you? Of course. Right. So it's that sort of kind of thing, and you can imagine, you know, more and more and more and more of those. <clears throat> you are you are given a fair few of those uh, of those planets, and as you can see, what was the one we were looking at? There we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those, and we'll just set up through there. So it's you know, a fairly large um, playing surface that you're you're using for this, right? So. <clears throat> Um, three will do, three will do. Okay, so as you go and investigate the system and work out exactly what's going on with it, then you start putting in um, panels that describe various things. So, here you go. We can, that one's got a gas giant going on there. Um where else have we got? There's another gas giant, hang on, I want a different one. Oh there we go, we've got a bit more of a thing going on there, so society stuff going on, right? Um so you build all these kind of things. <clears throat> and that's the you, you know the whole this is what you get when you when you identify a system when you go and have a look at it. You start putting more of these things on there. Oh, so two society ones, I want some different. Uh, oh, there we go, there's an asteroid built, right? So, um, so you build the systems up like this. And that's what it's saying by, in the scenario book, when it was saying that, you know, do the planet fall bit, do all the survey bit. That's empty space. God, honestly, put all the society and stuff around empty space. Uh, and then you, you end up with that now. When you get to ownership of a planet, then you use these things, right? And there's red and blue. That's for the two-player game. Okay, so you go, right, I, I am owning, um, let's say, <laughs> I own this gas giant or something, right? And we can plop, plop that in, um, into there. And so the map builds up in that way. Uh, with, uh, with yeah, and you're moving assets around, so you have your uh, there's a there's a ship there. So let's say our ship at the moment is is there, coming into entering the system there. Um, and there's the, you can also just like more fiddly bits and stuff. We're just just going to. Um, <coughs> Keep going through all this. Uh, I'm not going to check to see whether this is actually the right counter for this thing, but um, different ships can have different statistics, and you can also mess around with those. And the way you do that is by taking one of these counters and just slotting it over the top of the base of um, of the ship. So then that describes what that particular ship is, um, and <laughs> as well as ships. I mean, they're quite little neat little things where we got to little ships one of the delays in the kickstarter uh, was uh, the original components were going to be cardboard and at some point in the line someone decided that they were going to be uh, these acrylic things and then just slot together uh, so there's a couple of ships. There are other ships available, and also assets. That's a that's a miniature guy. All right, same kind of thing, just a slot together miniature guy. Uh, and you similarly have uh, abilities and things. And when I was saying about the add-on packs, and I kept the boxes and things. So this is a grand strategy add-on pack box, so that I've got reference that. Uh, that's one of actually uh, one of the add-on packs that I have got floating around and there's a few other bits and pieces at the bottom of the box there right um, so that's sort of the basics of what uh, what we're going on um, so <coughs> 
What's next? Oh, and jump. I mean, <laughs> your, your jumps basically. These these jump points you move between them. So if I'm going from there, <clears throat> if I'm in this system, I can then go to jump to that system. That's jump one. If there's another system over there, I can move to there. And that'd be jump two, and, and and they go up to jump three. So you can move different systems. So that's your basics of movement. Uh, bam, 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 bam. What's next? Cards. Let me show you a card. <clears throat> need to put them in better things here we go come on all of your ones all of your ones right um, so these are cards there's lots of them and lots of different types so uh, cards comprise if I can To get they're very flimsy and they get stuck together if any I'll, I'll give you a bit of review in a bit so this is a basic card right and it comprises a number of things so this number at the top here is an initiative number the thing down here is the action um, then they correspond to the board of uh, the board of actions that's according to your your faction that you've constructed um, and then this in the middle here describes an event. So when you play a card, you can either do the action or the event. And the initiative number is used both in the, the primary phases of the game and in ship combat to determine who goes first. All right, so at the start of a game, you are, you are dealt uh, eight a hand of eight cards <clears throat> uh, and from that that deal of eight you get to put them face down on those uh, you deal three of them face down on your play map and then both you and your opponent go and turn over your first card. Whoever's got the highest initiative number gets to go first. You, whoever goes first, decides whether they're going to do. So, you know, they've got something like this going on. <coughs> uh, they decide whether they're going. Uh, well, th that, that initiative determines who goes first. Then they decide whether they're going to do the action or whether they're going to play the event. Uh, if they do the action and then in there they've got little um, you do have some clues so if you if you play the event then you you, you shift it down to say okay the, the event is in play and um, you need to uh, take it in into account as you're going along some of the events will actually go and go through if you play the action then you can just put a, a little cube on it to say that i have done this all right just little wooden marker cubes meeply type stuff someone's obviously emailing me a lot uh, and then that's it then it's your opponent's turn they do their first card and then it comes back to you and you do your next card a lot of diplomacy going on and then so on and then so on right so it always means that you can you can play a um like the diplomacy actions if you've got no <coughs> no diplomat that's in any kind of position to be able to uh, to perform a, dipl a diplomatic action you can still perform the event so every card will have an effect um every time it is used and appears in the game right so that's that's the basics of um of the way the game is played really uh when starships come into combat with each other this comes into play um you you start with you put them in to whichever area of the board that is uh, that best describes what's going on and then you have this little smart phase time thing so you've got sensors missile attack range and then target 
Um, and then you take that in turns with initiative as well. You use the cards again, use the initiative numbers on the cards to go and de determine the initiative of who is going to um, go first and fire first and um, perform their ship actions first. So is that element of combat going on there? Uh, right, so <clears throat> what actions are possible in the game? Well, if we go to uh, the... There's a rule book. Where did the rule book go? Uh, oh, I know where the rule book went. I put it underneath the scenario book. That's clever. Right, so it's a handy little summary sheet um, that just just describes. Okay, so that's about like, setting up the game. You can see the cards and so on. Um, this describes all the various components. So you've got different bits for this to describe the systems. Um, these are world panels to describe the resources and what kind of society exists on the world, these things here. Then you've got uh, outposts, which um, are your buildings and structures and everything else that the factions can build. Um, of those, you've got uh, defense systems that can uh, that, that help in when a when a system is is under attack or someone is trying to forcibly take it over. It it gives a bonus to resist that and to fight back against that. Uh, embassies, which are um, effectively they count as diplomats. So diplomats are one of the assets that you move around the board in order to go and talk to other civilizations and bring them into your fold. An embassy acts as a a, a diplomat that's permanently placed on that world. Um, so factories, uh, they can build stuff. It says here they count as double when determining system power for treaties. So yeah, that's that's when you're when you're. Um, figuring out the treaties between your your faction and a particular world <clears throat> which is like the primary goal of the game is to get these treaties in order to bring those worlds into your system uh, and starports so if a if a system has got a starport then it can be used to repair ships and uh, and yeah, as a staging base for other bits and pieces right so uh, three different types of ships You've got, oh, and by the way, the, the base color just matches up to the faction. So there's there's blue and red versions of all of these. Uh, scout ships, which move around, you can survey stuff. Um, destroyers, which you can use to uh, attack stuff in uh, in combat, but you can also transport things with it. Uh, and cruisers, which are l large ships, but generally used for carrying um, carrying people around. And then your assets where you've got diplomats, you can perform diplomatic actions. You've got uh, shadow agents that can perform shadow agent action, actions, soldiers that can perform uh, soldier actions. Uh, and then um, you've got you know, the, these tokens that describe the, uh, the statistics of, of the, those ships and, and, uh, and assets. Uh, and uh, yeah, there, there you go. Uh, and then that just describes the header. Oh, I think we've done that anyway. Okay. So it is, it's one of those games where the rules are relatively simple, but the, the scope of the game, because of the different permutations, especially with the, the, the difference in, in worlds and the different layouts that you can end up with. I mean, even within the scenarios, you know, we looked at that scenario five, uh, but uh, you've got, you can play the, that scenario over and over again and the board will be different every time because where it's saying uh, perform uh, map and planet fall each remaining system in the subsector. That's basically these bunch of things here was the layout of it. Um, these worlds with the Imperial Sunburst on them. Those aren't going to be the same every time you play the game. So even though the scenario is going to be the same or the, the description of the scenario is going to be the same and the um, victory conditions and so on the actual scenario the actual board that you're playing the scenario on is going to be different and it's the same it's the same with every one of the scenarios there is a, a, it's a sort of default where the the world is all um yeah so the long night is ended and you're going to do this so that's like the start the start basic one right and then um there we go. I think there's, there's a bit about creating your own Mr. Signal. No, that's just a complicated one. Though. So 
Um, so even though there's only eight scenarios or something like that in the book, nine scenarios in the book, they are really, really replayable because it's just, they're just different every single time. Right, so um, reviews. Uh, let me let me um, let me go on. Right. So for a start, <clears throat> I think these cards there could have been fewer cards, and they could have been of far better quality than that. Uh, I would preferred uh, a a. You know, there are literally tons of these cards. I've got <laughs> this. This is one deck. Um, there's another another deck there. There's another deck underneath. There are just an absolute ton of these cards. Um, they're very thin, and as you can see, if you leave them for any length of time, they they go and uh, stick to each other. So you've got to let them prize them apart again. They don't stick to each other. So that they they're going they're in danger of um, of pulling any of the art or the the finish off anything. I think the finish itself is just naturally tacky. Uh, it doesn't feel tacky. It, it's just they just like sticking to each other. Um, it's almost like oh there you go look you can hear it. Fine, see that so you can hear the actual things. You know, um, which is a bit annoying because you know trying to shuffle a deck at the beginning of a game that is just stuck to each other is just uh, not not fun. Um, so yeah, I would have preferred higher quality cards. Um, what happened in the Kickstarter was these tokens initially started off as cardboard standees and as I was sort of at some point the decision was made uh, by the people that and then picked up the Kickstarter to bring it over the line that a lot of these components that were originally going to be cardboard which uh, things like this and the actual ships themselves and the you know the people and everything else uh, you're going to come into focus yeah so these things originally started off life and the description of the stuff as being um, cardboard and they ended up being acrylic. Now, while I like the idea that they're acrylic and they're quite strong and they're easy to put together and all that kind of stuff, um, I, I just get a feeling that the expense or whatever, I don't know, I wasn't involved in the finances of the game, but um, the expense of producing these things in acrylic, um, I think keeping these as cardboard and having better quality cards would have just made the game nicer to play. Um, I mean, having both nicer quality cards and acrylic pieces, brilliant. But, uh, um, you know, if, if, if I was going to sacrifice one to the other, I would have preferred better quality cards because these are not, not very good cards at all, in my opinion. Right. But the, the game mechanics itself, it, it's, it's really easy. Uh, the the fact that you can configure everything, that there are so many options that you can um, pull together, it is great. It does mean that every single game is uh, is going to be different in some way um, from the configuration of the worlds, from the factions that you choose to play. You can mix and match things up. Uh, you can change things around a bit so that you're not playing the same type of, uh, of faction every time or the same uh, same set of actions available to you and all of that but I think that's I think that's brilliant it gives you another strategic option as well you know um, if you if you think about if you do traditional war games and stuff like that where you have army lists from which you can select what you're going to um, bring to the field then it's a bit similar to that. You've got your options to to go and and do that. Um, these these connectors are also um, also plastic, uh, and the <coughs> we're going to play um, quality component quality. Uh, these the the cardboard 
pieces of the game are of very, very thick card, very high quality. So, you know, the actual playing pieces of the game, the only, that's good, the only pieces of, uh, in the game that let it down, the only playing pieces in the game that let it down are the cards. Um, so from a quality point of view, that's, that's kind of uh, the only bugbear I have with it. The actual gaming pieces themselves, the, the map tiles, um, the ship components, the, the connections, the, uh, the boards that you're playing on, uh, even uh, even these things like the, your, your play mats and things, um, they're not necessarily. I mean, these are quite quite thin, but you don't need them to be uh, to be hugely thick or anything from that point of view. Uh, the cards, though, I mean, the cards are in play all the time. I mean, all you're doing the mat is putting cards onto it, right? So, so if a, if a mat is is thin, and the mats are relatively, you know. Relatively wobbly and thin, box art and back, but you know it doesn't matter because you're just going to plonk them onto the ground and they're not going to go anywhere from that. The cards you're going to be using all the way through the game. Um, so there we go. I've ranted about the cards enough. You get the idea. The cards are the the component-wise the thing that lets the game down. Rules-wise, um, I, I think the rules are okay. I think they could do with a little bit of tweaking here and there. Um, but isn't that the same with all games? They are playable as they are, um, and, it, and it's a it's a fun game. It's just a, a different take. It's a nice it's a nice concept, and uh, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to go out and do a, something a little bit crazy and different with it, you could even um, maybe produce a modification to it that. Uh, that took it forward into uh, the Refor uh, Reformation Coalition sort of era, the new era of Traveller. Um, any any point in Traveller's timeline where you have got the uh, the forces of the <coughs> of some greater polity sending people out into the um, into the wilds of interstellar space in order to reconnect and do things. Uh, you can have fun with that. Um, can you mix it in with a traveller game? Yeah, I think you could. Uh, I think some of the elements and actions and stuff like that could form the basis for scenarios. Uh, you could do the travel. I mean, these things like hex-based stuff, you could use them for mapping out a, a subsector. Um, and then mix the, the the rules of the game or the, the scope of the game uh, with role playing elements. And so it can be, I, I think, perfectly uh, usable within the traveler role playing game as a tool. Um, so, yeah, basically, should you give the game a go? I think so. Yes. Uh, if you get a chance to get your hands on a copy and, and give it a, a run through, then, yeah, go for it. Um, do I think it's the best game in the world? No, it's not. It's not by by far not the best game in the world, but it is a fun game. There is a lot of scope that you can do with it. No, no two games of it are going to be the same, even if you're playing the same scenario. Uh, and yeah, the it's a thinking game. You can really think your way through it and to uh, plot things out and work things out well so yes um it's a it's a good game it's a shame that the kickstarter was such a mess but you know such is the nature of kickstarter not everything is always as clean cut as uh, some of them go smoothly some of them don't and this was one of those that didn't go smoothly but at least it got there in the end uh and um, very, very, very much late, but very, very much present and complete and uh, and playable at the end of it. So, yeah. Traveller Ascension Imperial Warrant is the name of the game. And um, I think Traveller players especially get a lot of fun out of it. Oh, until uh, next time, 
have fun, have a good week, and uh, take care.